Hey there! In this video, we'll create a quick and simple to do web application using the ABP framework. So, this is how it's going to look. We have a simple to do list right here, and we can fill it. We'll say clean the living room, for example. We can say buy milk. And we can say water the plants. And we can also delete. So let's get started. I'll be referring to this documentation and I'll be using MVC and Entity Framework Core. You can feel free with any UI from here and also the database. But I'll take these and I'm going to walk you through the documentation. So the first step is installing the ABP CLI. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to run a terminal and I'm going to paste it and run the command. The next step, I'm going to get to the directory of my solutions. And I'm going to create a folder right here and I'm going to call it to do app for the application. And then I'm going to copy this one. And I will create the solution right here. Now, since it's done, I'm going to go to the directory of it. And I'm going to open the solution. And here's our solution with the domain driven design. Let's run the database migrator to create the database and seed the initial data. And then let's run our web project. And here is our web app. On the administration side, you can create a new tenant where you're going to have identity management for both users and roles. Or you can just manage the users and roles from here. And we also have our settings. Let's stop running the solution and get to work. So the first step is in the domain layer. This application has a single entity and we'll start by creating it. Let's create a to-do item class inside the to-do app domain project. I'm going to create a class to-do item. And I'm going to paste all the code right here. It'll inherit from basic aggregate root and the GUID will be the primary key. The next step is database integration. We're going to open the to-do app DB context class in the entity framework core folder in the entity framework core project. And we're going to add a new DB set property to this class. We're here with the entity framework core project right here, DB context. And we're going to add the new DB set properties right here. Next, I'm going to navigate to the on model creating method in the to do app DB context class, and I'm going to map the adding code for the to do item entity. So I'm just going to copy this part right here. And then I'm going to add it in the same class, but right here at the bottom. So configure your own tables and entities inside here. And by that, we've mapped the to-do item entity to the to-do items table in our database. Now, after adding a DB set, we're going to have to add the migration. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go to Entity Framework Core. And I'm going to hit the CMD. And I'll paste it right here. And now we can see our migration right here, added to-do item we can see our table with our new DB set. Let us also update the database. Next step is the application service in the application layer. An application service is used to perform the use cases of the application. And we need to perform the following use cases. Get the list of the to-do item, create a new to-do item, and delete an existing to-do item. We can start by defining an interface for the application service and now let's create a new i to do app service interface in the to do app application contracts project. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to go to the application contracts and I'm going to create an interface right here. i to do app service. And I'm going to paste the code right here. Now the get list async and the create async will be returning a to do item DTO. And so we're going to have to create a to do item DTO class. 
So let's create this class right here to do item DTO. And I'm going to copy this from here. And as you can see right here, the error is gone. It's just a very simple DTO class that matches our to do item entity. And now we're ready to implement the iToDo app service. Let's implement the application service and let's create a new to-do app service class. In our application project, let's create it. And let's paste our code right here. Now this class inherits from the application service of our ABP framework. And it'll help us implement the use cases that we've described before. And now let's start implementing the methods. We'll start with the get list async. I'm going to copy it from here and I'm going to paste it at the bottom right here. Next thing is the create async. Copied it and I'm going to paste it right here. And the last one is the delete async. Just going to copy and I'm going to paste it right here. And as you can see, the error is gone. Now, ABP provides default generic repositories for the entities, and we used one right here. We've injected the iRepository, which is the default repository for the to-do item entity. And then after injecting, we used its methods. We've used its methods right here, get list async, insert async, and delete async. These are all standard repository methods to deal with the database. And now it's time for the UI. Let's remember what we're trying to build. We're trying to build something like this, simple as this, right? So let's see. First, I'm going to copy the index cshtml.cs. And I'm going to paste it right here in the class. Now, this class uses the i to do app service to get the list of the to do items and assign the to do items property. We will use it to render the to-do items on the Razor page. And next up is the CSHTML part of it. I'm going to copy this. And I'm just going to paste it right here. Now let's just remember what we're trying to do right here is something very simple. So something like a card view. And so we are using an ABP's card tag helper. You could directly use the standard bootstrap HTML structure. However, the ABP tag helpers make it much easier and safer. Now this page is using CSS and JavaScript, so let's make them as well. Let's do the JavaScript part. I'm going to copy the code from here. I'm going to paste it right here. Now in this part of the code, we are just removing the related item. Right here, we are just registering to the click button and we are just removing it. And we're also showing the deleted the to-do item message that shows up right here. This one. And they're getting deleted from the DOM, so we don't need to refresh the page. And on the second part, we are just creating a new to-do item on the server. And if it succeeds, we will manipulate the DOM to insert a new list item element to the to-do list. And by this way, we do not have to refresh the page every time we create a new to-do item. Now, the interesting part right here is how we communicate with the server. See the dynamic JavaScript proxies and the auto API controller section to understand how it works. But right now, let's continue and complete with the application. So we have the last one, the CSS file. I'm just going to copy it from here. And I'll just paste it right here. And by that, we can run the application. And as we can see right here, we have our to do app. Let's say buy some milk. Uh, make coffee. Water the plants. We can create and we can delete and we can also get the list. And as you can see, the message keeps appearing from here every time we delete a to-do item. And right here is the dynamic JavaScript proxies and auto API controller section. Only not to make this video longer, you can read this section to understand how we communicated with the server. And that is how to create a to-do web application. See you next time.